Good afternoon. Um, I am Elaine Forbes, the Executive Director of the Port of San Francisco, and I'm here representing my staff, and we are celebrating a major accomplishment today. Um, it's been a long, hard road of data and collaboration and work, and today we realize it's a very successful road, and we're very proud to stand here with the Army Corps of Engineers. The question we had in 2018, uh, when the leadership actually right behind me came together, was how do we protect this waterfront? Um, we have big areas of the city that the seawall protects from flood. Big uh, public systems, uh, regional systems like BART, that had, have serious risk of flood from sea level rise. And so the question came, how do we protect it? And we put together a bond that went to the voters and in 2018 to say, we have risk, we have trouble, help us. The leadership behind me made that bond happen. With that bond, we began to work and advocate. That same year, we amazingly got a new start from the Army Corps of Engineers. And the Army Corps of Engineers came in and said, we will study this problem. We will figure out how to fix it. And if we find federal interest, we'll work with you to build the project. And today, we're celebrating the draft plan that has come out of that process. It involves six years of work, very deep analysis and investigation. This is not an easy problem to solve. Uh, but now you will see and the public will see that this work has led to key answers to the puzzle of how to protect this waterfront. The remarkable leaders behind me took very, very, very bold steps with persistent commitment to the long game and to addressing sadly what we must address to make this day possible. We mark this milestone as a great achievement. And I want to acknowledge the people behind me, uh, Speaker Emeritus Nancy Pelosi. Thank you. <laughs> Mayor London Breed. <laughs> Lieutenant Governor Eleni Kunalakis. State Senator Scott Weiner. Board President Aaron Peskin. Uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, South Pacific Commander, Colonel James Hondura. <laughs> and eventually, City Administrator Carmen Chu may join us. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so I want to talk about what this plan is, what this draft plan is. It analyzed the flood risks and effects of sea level rise from Aquatic Park to Heron's Head Park, port jurisdiction. It shows where to build the flood defenses, how high to build the flood defenses, and how much space to take in order to have those flood defenses. It's up to us, the city, our partners, to figure out what's going to go back on top, which to make a beautiful waterfront, the fitting of this wonderful city and county of San Francisco. The waterfront of the future has to be at least as majestic as the waterfront of today. Um, the, the, the plan's expensive. There's no doubt it's expensive. It has a price tag of multi-billions, 13 billion to be specific at this time. When we move forward on projects, the federal government will pay for 65 cents of every dollar that it costs, 65% contribution. That is a big benefit to the city and county of San Francisco. Because we know sea level rise is happening, but we don't know exactly how it happens or how quickly, this plan is adaptive and has monitoring components and is really smart about how to build to a changing and unknown condition. It's also unique in terms of how it addresses the waterfront across. It is a major milestone, but as I said, there's much that will be ahead, much that will be ahead. This plan will be implemented over many decades, many decades, and the phasing and implementation strategies will be very important to us because we're gonna wanna leverage other public infrastructure investments, private investments, and just other investments that make the federal interests and the city's interests come together in a really important way. Um, it's time for the public to engage. That's what we're announcing today. The public has engaged to date. The public needs to please keep engaging on this plan. To build an amazing waterfront, we need that engagement. 
and we're working on things that we may not see, all of these projects, but the future generation will see and we're paving the way for these important works uh, so they're prepared, these projects are prepared to implement. Um, so I mentioned I'm surrounded by the leaders who made this happen, um, both through the larger Army Corps study that we're sharing today and through Proposition A, the Earthquake Safety Bond. So I'd like to first introduce Speaker Emerita Pelosi. Speaker Emerita Pelosi has served San Francisco and County with such dis distinction. She is, in fact, a national treasure, as we know. She and Senator Feinstein are the reasons that we got the, the New START Army Corps in 2018. Without this New START, we would not be having this discussion in any way, shape, or form because it began the flood study and our deep partnership with the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, with the passage of the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act and the Inflation Reduction Act, there is no one who has worked harder to address climate change than Speaker Emerita Pelosi. Also, in 2020 and again in 2022, the Army Corps looks at costs versus benefits. The San Francisco costs include seismic costs, which are substantial when you're building anything. The, in, in particular on this waterfront, we have terrible seismic conditions. Those costs were going to drag down any hope of us having federal interests. And it was Speaker Emerita Pelosi's a team that saw through many technical and legislative amendments so we can compete and in fact there was a finding of federal interest without this finding we would not be having this conversation so uh, it was with great honor that i introduce her and thank her for sharing in this in this milestone thank you thank you so much uh, thank, you, thank you so very much uh, uh, san francisco port director elaine forbes to you and your staff, congratulations on what is happening today, and thank you. As you could tell from the presentation of the director, this is a complicated initiative. Uh, when she talks about new starts, we had to fight an initiative of a previous occasional uh, uh, occupant of the White House who didn't want any more new starts. And then if there were new starts, we had to be one of them. So again, a, a tribute to Senator Feinstein, who in the Senate was such an important part of this. Uh, we're here because of the vision of the people of San Francisco. I'm honored to be here with the official family, the mayor, Senator Wiener, Lennox Kunalakis, Aaron Peskin, Carmen Chu, and the big humma humma here today. The big humma humma here today is the United States Army Corps of Engineers, South Pacific Division Commander, Colonel James Condora. This is, this is the moment because I can't even tell you how many times in the years that I've been in Congress where people from all over the country will come to me and say, can you, can you influence the Army Corps of Engineers to certify, to, put, to give an a, a imprimatur to our project? No. They have an independent process <laughs> that they use. It's not political. It's factual and determined. So for us to have... I mean, Elaine, uh, Director Forbes very clearly described everything, so I won't go in it, so you enable us to spend time on some other remarks. I appreciate that. But this imprimatur from the Army Corps of Engineers to this extent is remarkable, and we, sh we should be proud of that. And this period of public comment is really a model to the country as well, because, again, we want to be factual and thoughtful and practical about what we can get done. So it's really an honor to be here. The century-old Embarcadero, century-old Embarcadero Seawall, provides a, um, sip, a crucial foundation uh, for our city protecting families, businesses, you know all of that, and streets from flooding, flooding, as we face the intensifying climate crisis and, uh, and the possibility of earthquake risk. The, draft, this draft today, the release of this draft plan brings us a step closer uh, to shoring up our seawall. The climate crisis, you know, rising sea levels, that's one of the consequences of, of climate crisis, is an existential threat of our time and our first, our future depends on taking action now. This is why the draft plan is so critical to protecting the city's seawall from earthquake and flooding risk. It's been my privilege to fight in Congress for resources along the way. 
to help investigate how to strengthen our seawall, including in the president's infrastructure law, $5 million to continue these studies. It's one step at a time. When we talk about $13 billion, two-thirds of that will be federal, one-third state and local. But in order to get that, we have to demonstrate, as we always do in San Francisco, that we are a model to the country, that our decisions are scientific and data-based, and that we reach, uh, uh, have in sight the goal and the timetable to get the job done. As the director said, this is going to take a long time. So as she was speaking, I was thinking that in some ways we're like we're planting a tree. Future generations will enjoy, but we owe it to them. We owe it to them to make sure, to make sure we do this right. And that's why I'm so excited to be here with everyone here, but on all of you. Uh, but Colonel Hondor, he's really making all the difference in all of this. But he couldn't do it without the foundation laid by our port, to our mayor, to the port director, to the staff. Thank you for making this day possible. Thank you all so much. So in this, in this uh, journey, it's very important for leaders to be willing to invest that something in something that takes a long time. And the benefit accrues way outside term to future generations. Um, and it takes a lot of dedication, uh, a lot of commitment to being prepared and being safe. And Mayor London Breed has been that leader and a steadfast champion of this work since she became mayor in and in 2018, it was her first bond, the seawall bond. And she was willing to go forward to look at a foundation trouble, earthquake problem and flood risk, and convinced voters 83% to support moving forward on studying this problem and being prepared. Since Par Proposition A has passed, she has led her departments to work together I see uh, Director Tumlin from the SFMTA here, and I'm so glad to see him because we department heads have had to work together to figure out how these projects will come um, into fruition in a successful way. And she has urged her departments, public works, planning, resilience, I see Brian Strong is here, capital planning, SFMTA, and the PUC who are all engaged and deeply impacted by these proposed projects. She's guiding her departments to a strategic alignment so we can have this plan for seven and a half miles of waterfront uh, to protect our shoreline. Uh, it's a great honor to present our mayor, Mayor London Breed. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Thank you so much, Elaine, for your visionary leadership and for getting us to this extraordinary place that we are celebrating today. You know what's easy, especially for elected leaders, is when there is things that they bring forward, including myself, oftentimes we want the instantaneous gratification. So it's easy in some cases to look at something like what's happening with the seawall and to say, well, I won't be here anyway, so why should I care? I won't even be alive, potentially, so why should it matter? And the fact is, people like the ones sitting behind me today they are not choosing easy. They are choosing hard. They are choosing to think about future generations and climate change and global warming and sea level rise and choosing to do the hard thing. And that is bring people together in order to talk about the challenges that exist, the real impacts in the next century. By the end of this century, five, three to seven percent of the, the waterfront will be covered in water here in San Francisco if we don't act now, if we don't talk about it, if we don't accept the opportunity that we have before us to put forth a visionary plan to address sea level rise in one of the most constructive ways possible because when we passed this bond in 2018, we were putting everyone in this city and in this country on notice that we are putting this on the top of our list as a priority. And so we truly appreciate the Army Corps of Engineers for making the hard decision to choose to work with San Francisco to draft this plan 
and to one of the first times ever to use equity and to talk about communities that have been disproportionately impacted by the harms of climate in the past, by the harms and injustices of bad decisions in the past and how we need to ensure that this comprehensive plan includes all communities and that it doesn't negatively impact. And that's why we are talking about 7.5% 7.5 miles of waterfront which goes all the way into the Bayview Hunters Point community as well. So I am excited about what we are doing here. This is extraordinary. And again, you know, when you start talking about water pipes all these infrastructure things that you're asking people to to just support it and to pay attention this is going to be better for future generations folks are like well what's gonna what's gonna be better for me now but the thing about san franciscans is they care about climate change and they care about what's happening in the city and this is why the voters not only overwhelmingly supported this bond in 2018. It's why so many of the folks here today who have been responsible for helping us to draft this plan are with us. And we couldn't have a better fearless leader in the House of Representatives than our Speaker Emerita Nancy Pelosi, because let me tell you, not only does she help to bring home the resources for our parks, open space, transportation, I mean, San Francisco, has been the beneficiary of extraordinary federal leadership because of her. And this is exactly the type of example of the work that she has done and will continue to do to ensure San Francisco is at the forefront of addressing so many of the issues that we face and climate change with our climate action plan and with the work that we did to focus on the waterfront. We are opening up the doors to the public to provide input, but more importantly, we're opening up the opportunity opportunity for the funding necessary to not only talk about the plan, but to actually implement the plan. And I'm looking forward to seeing the work can at least get started in my lifetime so that we can get the job done and we can all feel confident that we did something to impact future generations and we have set the seed for them to also think about how we take care of the planet and leave it in better condition than we found it. Thank you all so much. We hope to get some projects in in your lifetime, Mayor. We will do. We will try hard, won't we, team? Okay. Um, so in a program like this, you definitely need federal, state, and local investment. It's just too much to bear on any particular entity. We would eclipse, for example, the whole city's geo bond program if we try to lean all on the federal, on the local source, and. We have a wonder, I have a wonderful leader to introduce here who absolutely knows about leverage and has worked very, very hard to see ports get investment. I want to introduce Lieutenant Governor of the state of California, Eleni Kunalakis. She was the first, prior to being the first woman elected to this office, she was our port commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 that was an important job uh, because she was here when we were just getting started with resilience. And she pushed us, she saw what we needed to do. Um, and so it was wonderful to have her there uh, when we started. She also oversees the State Lands Commission, which I think is one of the most collaborative and transparent public agencies. You know, it's just a wonderful agency. And she's always assuring that ports have resources. And it was our lieutenant governor who got us rescue funds when we lost 40% of our revenue and we were in terrible, terrible shape. Without her leadership, we would not be here today. Our operations would have gone down as our tenants. Um, and we we really thank you for driving our economic recovery and well-being. And with uh, with no further ado, I'd like to introduce the Lieutenant Governor, Eleni Kunalakis. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. You. Thank you, Director. <laughs> thank you so much, Director Forbes. Uh, it really is an honor to be here with all these great leaders um, to recognize the work uh, that has gone on over the last five years to deliver this very important plan for the future of the San Francisco waterfront. Um, as Director Forbes mentioned, I am a former port commissioner for San Francisco, and we would regularly 
uh, push back against the authority of the State Lands Commission. So it's somewhat ironic that I head that body today. Um, but what it is, it is the jurisdictional authority for the land of uh, about 850 miles of California coast that is held in the public trust of all the people of the state of California. And we know that our coastline from the very top of our state to the bottom is now extremely vulnerable to the rising Pacific Ocean that is brought on by a warming climate. The fact that San Francisco is so far ahead of the game in creating this plan is really laudable for everyone involved. And, and I also want to recognize the presence of, of you, Commander, because it was essential that the Army Corps partic be, be very close, uh, work, closely working with the port to develop this plan, and that we know that there are uh, infrastructure um, tools and solutions available to protect uh, the city of San Francisco, the jewel of California and, and, and the West from the rising waters, which we know are going to happen. And then finally, I would just like to also recognize, because uh, Elaine Forbes gave me credit for the, uh, for the rescue funds, yet again, that was Speaker Emerita Pelosi who made sure that it was written in to the relief funds during COVID that the Port of San Francisco would be able to access those funds so that the many businesses here uh, that were struggling would be able to stay solvent through that time. So the, uh, the people who are here represent a team that has been able to deliver a plan. What is ahead of us is the construction of that plan. Uh, and I'm very confident, as the mayor said, that we will see these projects come up out of the ground in order to protect what we know is the most beautiful city in the state and the world. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, now I have the great distinction uh, to introduce our representative from the Army Corps of Engineers. But before I do, I want to tell you how great this team has been to work with. Um, there's been several members of leadership that have come out to San Francisco to really understand this problem, this hard urban edge that's, that provides flood protection to so many assets and resources, is new, you know, it really, really understanding the situation, willing to add things, not just costs and benefits, but comprehensive benefits for community that hits on some of the items that the mayor spoke of re related to equity, um, and also just to design into unknown conditions. So we couldn't ask for a better group of engineers to lead this, this process. Um, and so with that, I would like to introduce um, the, the South Pacific Division Commander, uh, Colonel James Hendura. All right, good morning, good morning. Hey, beautiful day to be out here, right? So I want to just thank the port director for uh, coordinating for this beautiful weather. W once again, round of applause. Hey, and also, so a uh, special day today and then one on Sunday, right? There's a little game on Sunday. Go we'll see. Well, all right, right, we'll see what happens. It should be a good weekend, right? So hey, thank you, Director Forbes and your team at the port here for setting up today's event. I also want to acknowledge and thank uh, Senator Weiner. Board President Peskin, City Administrator Chu, for being here today. It's great to have your participation and your support. The Corps of Engineers is also grateful for the leadership and support of Speaker Emerita Pelosi, the Newsom administration, Mayor Breed, and Mayor Breed and these efforts. It's an honor to be with you today as we announce this important milestone. Our partnership with the Port of San Francisco and work on this study spans many years across multiple Corps of Engineer entities. I'm excited to be here representing a well-integrated team of professionals from across the Corps of Engineers who have partnered closely with the port team to form an integrated task force to deliver this complex and pace-setting project. Today's release signifies the next step in our partnership with the port, the city, and the public in building coastal resiliency. In 2022, the Corps of Engineers and the port released seven alternatives or draft waterfront adaptation strategies for public review. The draft feasibility report we are releasing today 
includes a tentatively selected plan or draft plan that was developed using elements of these previous alternatives. That draft plan provides an analysis of the costs, benefits, and environmental and social impacts, and is tailored to the unique conditions and different risks at the port. This draft plan considers climate resiliency as a goal for the San Francisco waterfront. It establishes approximately where the Corps of Engineers and the city to build uh, coastal resiliency and mitigation features, both structural and nature-based, and how much future sea level rise these features will have to manage before they need to be adapted to higher water levels. This is not only a step forward for San Francisco, it's a step forward for the Corps of Engineers, and what we're doing here in the Bay will be a model for other projects. The plan accounts for social and environmental benefits and impacts, in addition to more traditional economic analysis. This means environmental justice, social and economic equity, impacts to vulnerable populations, and environmental benefits are factored into decision making and evaluation for coastal flood risk management alternatives. The study is also innovative and it includes alternatives and plans for future actions to address the uncertainty of the rate of sea level rise and includes a range of possible future sea level rise scenarios. It includes a monitoring and adaption plan that will enable the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the city, and the public to use best available science to understand when first actions should be taken and shoreline flood risk mitigation measures will be needed to adapt to higher water levels. Work on the draft plan included extensive collaboration with regional and federal agencies, all of which were informed by more than six years of public feedback on the future of the waterfront. Today's release of the draft report starts a 60-day period for comment, public comment on the study. And we want to hear from you, the public. We want to hear from you, so we need your feedback to get this right. This will be a series of, there will be a series of public workshops at the end of February and other outreach events to gain further insight for the community, from the community. After responding to these comments received, we will work with the port to make changes to that draft plan based on public feedback, further technical analysis, and policy review. We expect the final report and recommended plan to go before Congress for consideration by 2026. And again, I'd like to thank Director Forbes and the Ports team for their partnership and commitment to outreach in this process. We look forward to taking the next step in this long but critical journey to build coastal resiliency for the city of San Francisco. Building strong, SAONs, be all you can be. All right, now I have the honor uh, to introduce uh, someone who is so hardworking and is always there uh, to support important measures, not only to support, but to get behind their uh, approval. Uh, just recently, uh, this wonderful leader uh, brought a piece of legislation through the through the state that will allow us to build on Piers 3032 and get up to $450 million of private investment in resilience and flood protection. Uh, Senator Scott Weiner has always been a supporter of climate adaptation. He is recognized as in Times Magazine, actually, as one of the country's top 100 climate leaders. In 2023, he passed the Climate Corporate Data Accountability Act, which requires businesses with annual revenues over one billion working with, within California to publicly disclose their carbon emissions. He's championed lots of climate initiatives through his legislative career with a focus on housing and transit. He worked tire tirelessly in 2018 on the Prop A bond, and he also, as I said, just moved legislation through that's absolutely critical to an, not only a seismically safe and earthquake safe waterfront, but an exciting, vibrant waterfront. And with that, Senator Scott Weiner. Uh, thank you, Director Forbes. Um, I just want to say uh, I am. Uh, so I'm proud of a lot of things about San Francisco, but I am so uh, proud of the Port of San Francisco uh, and its leadership. When you look at the transformation uh, of our waterfront in San Francisco, I think sometimes we 
get used to things and take it for granted, but you can look at photos not that long ago, uh, and this has just been a rebirth, and it's very, very exciting. So thank you to uh, Elaine and to the entire uh, port team for your amazing uh, work. Um, so the, uh, we know that uh, sea level rise is not some future theoretical problem. It's here. Uh, it could have been here today. Uh, we, we lucked out with the tides. Uh, but it is here, and it is only going to get uh, worse, uh, given the larger failures to uh, end our reliance on fossil fuels uh, and the continuing uh, heating of our planet. Uh, and w we cannot allow a situation where the Embarcadero is being flooded regularly, where our Muni and BART tunnels are being flooded regularly, where parts of downtown are being flooded regularly. This isn't just about having some waves coming up periodically at the Embarcadero. This is about the potential for massive disruption of our city, of our transit systems, uh, of our downtown. We cannot let that happen, and that is what this is about. Uh, we know that the environmental movement was, uh, uh, some may dispute this, but I'm going to say it was born here in San Francisco. Uh, and has always grown here and in the Bay Area. Uh, and just like John Muir and, and the Sierra Club, or when, it, when it were founded here, and all the folks who created that movement were responding to the environmental crisis uh, of that time, uh, we need to respond to the environmental crisis of our time, uh, the climate disaster. And that means the bigger picture, ending our reliance on fossil fuels, moving towards 100% clean energy, it also means making the physical changes needed uh, so that we can keep going on and being strong even in the face of rising sea levels. Uh, and I know we'll be able to do that uh, here. Um, we know that uh, uh, Madam Speaker, she is just so fantastic at delivering for this community and I know we'll continue to have such a strong uh, local, state, federal partnership uh, to get the funding done here. Um, and I'm just so thrilled that the Army Corps of Engineers uh, is so engaged and so supportive of this project. And I just want to thank uh, the Corps uh, for doing that. Uh, I also just want to acknowledge, uh, I think for anyone, and probably when the Chronicle article came out this morning, um, a lot of people probably saw for the first time uh, that there is going to be uh, a disruption. There will be uh, periods of time when uh, when our waterfront, when the Embarcadero is closed down. Uh, and that is probably jarring for a lot of people and it's disruptive. Uh, but I also know that the people of San Francisco uh, think in the long term. Uh, and the people of San Francisco understand uh, that we have to get this done and we will make the sacrifices needed to do so. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator Weiner. Um, so now I have the distinct honor to introduce an absolute champion for the waterfront, uh, really involved in every project initiative um, with a hand toward ensuring our historic fabric is here, ensuring, ensuring vibrancy, and ensuring that we really, really produce a quality public waterfront. Uh, president of the board, Aaron Peskin, is a defender of our waterfront, as I said. Um, before he was elected, um, he was part of a broad coalition to convince the port and BCDC, the Bay Area Conservation and Development Commission, to nominate the Embarcadero Historic District to the, uh, the National Register of Historic Places. Um, he's been on the Bay Area Conservation Commission for many years. He's helped shef shepherd significant shifts in the focus on that organization's effort towards sea level rise adaptation. How do we adapt these important resources for the sea level rise that is, is surely coming? He has absolutely, absolutely drove the 2018 bond. Um, he and the mayor, um, and Senator Weiner, but specifically Board President Aaron Peskin, put a lot of time and energy into seeing that bond through. And he's been um, helping us figure out the sea level rise challenges. We do not have answers yet for that Embarcadero Historic District, but we will surely find them. And with that, uh, Board President Aaron Peskin. 
Thank you. I'll bring the microphone down even a little further from Scott Wiener to Elaine Forbes to myself. I was going to say that you were saving the best for last, but actually we were really saving the best for last uh, with our city administrator, Carmen Chu, next. Uh, Director Forbes chose this moment I think because an hour and 23 minutes ago, we had our maximum high tide for the day at 5.99 feet, which you can see has already been spilling onto the Embarcadero. And if you think about that relative to relatively conservative mid-century sea rise projections of about two feet, that means the Embarcadero in 25 years is underwater. This is nothing short of the imperative of our time. And I think Speaker Pelosi got it just right. This is a seed that we are planting for future generations for ribbons that none of us will cut, but that future generations will celebrate. Very much like Senator Weiner said, about the Bay Area being the home of the birth of the environmental movement. It was here that three women in the mid-1960s, a half a century ago, fought back against the filling in of the Bay, the Bay that now is going to expand because of global warming. It was those three women, Sylvia McLaughlin, Esther Gulick and Kay Kerr that led to the passage of the McAteer Petrus Act for the conservation of the shoreline of the nine barrier counties. We are continuing their legacy under BCDC's state jurisdiction, under the jurisdiction of the Army Corps of Engineers uh, who have become an incredible two-thirds financial partner in solving this imperative with the state of California and their money and the people of the city and county of San Francisco who put their money where their mouth is, who got it to the tune of almost a half a billion dollars up front. It is the people of San Francisco who were able to show the state and the federal government that we mean business. And to them, I want to say, this is your plan, and this is your opportunity to comment on that plan. Our plans become better because the people of this city are smart, they are involved, and they help us perfect our plans. So use the next 60 days, comment on this plan, help the very, very smart people who I've met with who are under the jurisdiction of Colonel Hondura. Meet with the planners who have spent the last six years, yes, I'm looking at you, Brad Benson, uh, who have brought us to this moment and help us make that plan better. Thank you, Director Forbes. Thank you, Mayor Breed. Thank you to our Lieutenant Governor. And thank you, most of all, to our Speaker Emerita, Nancy Pelosi. Thank you, President Peskin. And yes, it was the voters who first put the money in on the down payment. Without that move, uh, we wouldn't be here. And it was an amazing investment. So I, I think the best is saved for last. Um, I am going to introduce a wonderful leader who has the incredible responsibility of balancing all of these capital planning needs across the city and figuring out how to phase and implement these needed improvements. Um, she has been on the capital planning committee for some time. She has an incredible financial background and a great mind and is an amazing thought leader in pushing us forward and also helping with the interdepartmental coordination, which is complex now and only will be become more complex. It is with a great distinction I get to introduce to you the city administrator, Carmen Chu. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Carmen Chu, and I serve as San Francisco city administrator. I think you must all be very happy and excited that I'm the last speaker. Um, but I've got to bring your expectations down, because I'm going to talk about the numbers, <laughs> which is really important here. I really just want to underscore how important this effort is. 
San Francisco is uh, no stranger to preparing and thinking ahead. We were the home to the 1906 earthquakes, to the Loma Prieta earthquakes, and we understand how important it is to make sure that we're building a resilient city that with, can withstand natural disasters like earthquakes. And with all the climate changes that we're seeing happening in this world, also being able to deal with sea level rise. To give you a perspective of what this means and why this is such an important day to be able to announce the federal interest and this partnership going forward, this represents $13 billion in federal interest and billions of dollars that can come to San Francisco from the federal government. To give you a perspective of how much we've been able to fund locally in the last decade, we've spent about $4 billion in our local bond funding to be able to deal with all of the infrastructure needs in the city, not just what's here in the waterfront. That means all of our roads, all of our different buildings that have seismic needs, our hospital systems, our firehouses, our water systems. But our upcoming 10 years, we only have about $3 billion. So if you take a look at just the math there, over the last 10 years and the future 10 years, we're planning about $7 billion of investment in local funding. There is no possible way we can match what the federal government is going to give us. And so I just want to really say thank you to not only our state partners, but really to our federal partners here. We couldn't make this investment, uh, this seismic investment, this huge, huge investment without your support. Our local dollars only go so far. We mean business by putting our own dollars into it, but we really couldn't accomplish all that we're doing here without your help. So I want to thank our federal partners again for this federal interest and working so collaboratively with us on this plan, but also ask our state partners to work with us as we make the plans to fulfill the rest of the gap. So thank you so much for being here and we're excited to get going on the next phase of this plan. Excellent. Excellent. Before I conclude, I want to uh, recognize Carla Short, the Director of Public Works, who is here, and also Commissioner Gail Gilman, one of our commissioners who's leading us through this effort. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to take media questions over here, and we appreciate everyone for coming. Thank you.